priorities in the campaign. So let's just talk about a few of those. One of the big ones um, was the idea of downtown revitalization, yeah. wanting to clean up our downtown. How's that gone so far? Well, it's actually, it's been great. We now just have been going through the budget process. And so we've allocated over a million dollars to blight reduction. And that's exactly what we're going to do is bring it downtown um, and look at different ways that we can revitalize downtown with that money. Coming up on Face the State, the city of Reno has a new mayor for the first time in more than a decade. Now nearly half a year into her first term, we sit down with Hillary Sheevy to hear about changes coming to the city, a budget that's in the black for the first time in years, and what her vision is for the future. When Face the State starts right after the break. Welcome to Face the State. I'm Ariana Bennett. Thank you for joining us. Well, it's no secret this is a big time of change for the biggest little city with the economic recovery finally showing up in the budget and population growth coming our way fast. Reno Mayor Hillary Sheevy is here now to talk about the biggest issues facing our city. Mayor Sheevy, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Okay. Now, you know, really a ton of stuff happening right now and, and you know, you've been in this office now for almost half a year. How's it been so far? Oh, it, it's been great. I mean, there's so many wonderful things about our city, but obviously um, I think it's very different from being a council person to being the mayor, but um, it, it's been amazing. I mean, it really has, and we've been incredibly busy, so, so far I can't complain. What surprised you most about taking this office and what it's been like? Oh, that's, that's a great question. Let's see, what surprises me the most? You know, I, don't, I, I can't say that any one thing surprises me the most, except for I think that, um, this is one of those positions where you have to remain so incredibly dedicated to your city and so um, it's probably why I love this job so much but I think too the hardest the challenge for me is I want to be in 10 places at once and so it's hard to duplicate myself so that can be a little bit challenging when it comes to time and things like that and plus I'm kind of a workaholic anyway so um, that can get me in a little bit of trouble you know just constantly working working and and uh, with family but other than that it's good yeah makes sense okay now the last time you were on this show you were campaigning for the office of mayor and yeah. you outlined some of your priorities in the campaign so let's just talk about a few of those one of the big ones um, was the idea of downtown revitalization, yeah. wanting to clean up our downtown. How's that gone so far? Well, it's actually, it's been great. We now just have been going through the budget process, and so we've allocated over a million dollars to blight reduction, and that's exactly what we're going to do is bring it downtown um, and look at different ways that we can revitalize downtown with that money. Um, I think also you're seeing more of a grassroots effort, kind of like what we did in Midtown, um, as far as, you know, we just had Sculpture Fest, uh, things like that, those kinds of um, events are really is send it home went right to end the downtown core mm -hmm. and art is incredibly important but also 
bottom line is cleaning up our downtown and revitalizing it. And there's so much truly that is going on downtown um, that we really have spearheaded at the city. So it's changing dramatically. Now, when we say blight reduction, um, is that going to involve tearing down of some of these old buildings? Mm -hmm. Well, it certainly can do that. But it can also, we can provide uh, low interest loans to business owners that are having a hard time cleaning up their properties. Mm -hmm. And so um, those are some of the things that we can do. But really, it is looking at more at cleaning up and looking at graffiti, um, things of that nature. And yeah, if, if we do have to do some business uh, building teardown, we will do that. And look, you're seeing the Kings Inn. It's completely changing the downtown corridor. Yeah, I mean, it's great to see, definitely. What about um, some of these new businesses that have come in, uh, these Siegel Suites properties that kind of provide flexible stay timing right. so, you know, people can rent for short term or for longer term. I know that there was some concern initially about that. Is there still concern about that bringing in the wrong type of residents? Well, I, you're, you're exactly right. You hit the nail on the head. There were a lot of people that were very concerned um, with their business model. And actually, um, they reached out to me and, and we sat down. Uh, we've had a lot of great conversation. And next week, I'm getting ready to go tour. And they had sent me pictures of what they're doing. And I spoke to some of their residents and actually um, pretty impressed so far. So um, I think it's just about being on the same page and communicating what our needs are from the city of Reno and what we want to see downtown and make sure um, that they're being strong operators. And so far, actually, everything I've seen is that they are being strong operators, and that's what we're going to focus on is making sure that a lot of those motels are um, you know, following code. And for me, that's been extremely important. And you're going to really see on this blight reduction initiative us you know, really focusing on those business owners and those motels and holding them accountable. Now this all ties into the idea of the university district kind of extending into downtown. Um, I think a question that we get a lot is, um, will the placement of our homeless shelters right there on Record Street be an inhibitor to that? Well, I think if you look at a lot of major cities, you have homeless shelters downtown. So it obviously is something that we have to we have to really look at and, and make sure um, because you have to provide accessibility to services and things like that. And so I think it also comes down to us um, really making the right decisions when we come to planning our city mm -hmm. and um, where, where we strategically put things. But that goes back to our master plan and making sure um, that our downtown has everything that, that we need it to have. So I don't think it's rare um, when you have a homeless shelter downtown. That's very typical. But I think that um, we don't want to play into the fact that these motels that are so run down um, that are preying on people. Um, and so we, if we're going to provide low-income housing, we need to do it in the right way. And so that's something we will continue to focus on. Where does the university district program or, or idea stand now? Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's really exciting. I will tell you, um, RTC is looking at the whole corridor and, um, you know, bringing that the transportation piece into it and bringing that down to Midtown and um, and really changing the dynamic and you're seeing some economic development up there kind of like what you've seen um, on the riverside so you have sort of the same hub coffee and then you're gonna have um, soup too is gonna be up there and so okay. yeah so you're gonna really see this change in dynamic of economic development that is really gonna be conducive to the um, the university environment and that's really what we want to create we want to create this environment for the students mm -hmm. so that's really that's what's happening it's taking shape now and I think you probably won't recognize it in the next two years but you can see it I mean you can see the change especially if you go away for a little bit and come back we know looks like a completely different place than it did five six eight years ago it really is kind of amazing to see how much it's grown up. right and it does and it can change fairly quick so um, and I also think too the momentum here you're really starting to see with the recession sort of turning around in the economy, people are really starting to invest in, in businesses. And one thing that we're really talking about at the city of Reno, and we just saw it with this $10 million surplus, a lot of people think, wow, did you just find this out of nowhere? But really, that's not the case. And we've been talking about it, and it's, it's called the Tesla effect. And that's really what we're seeing. Um, and so it's going to really change our city and, and the way the things that we can offer. Yeah, I want to talk a little bit more about that a little bit later on in the show. First, I want to get back to another one of your you know big projects that you campaigned on, uh, reinstating the neighborhood advisory boards. Why is that something that you were so keen on? Well, um, I think it was probably one of the biggest mistakes that we had made when I was on the city council. And one of the things is that I don't think I realized how important that was because I 
um, being the at-large council member, um, I'm not, I don't get a nab. So, but what I realized was when I was campaigning, first and foremost, is listening to the people. That's the number one issue, the number one thing that they wanted the most. And when I campaigned, I campaigned on making sure that everyone had a voice at City Hall. And that's exactly what the NABs do. And the NABs also prevent um, from, you know, these developers coming in and just sort of running over the neighborhoods, things like that. And so it really gives the, those people in those neighborhoods the voice to come to City Hall, sit on a board, and have a say in our community. And so I thought that, first and foremost, was one of the most critical things we needed to do because I think it's about transparency transparency and also community. Has there been a lot of interest in that, a lot of takers? Oh my goodness, um, you cannot believe it. It's, it is unbelievable, um, the applications that we've received, the amount of applications, the amount of interest. And then we also um, have a program that uh, gears towards learning about the city and, and what we do and how, uh, how it runs. And, um, and that's, that's been really interesting because we were getting ready to close it down and then after the election it sort of has this new breed of momentum and we had 70 applicants and we had to stop the applicants at 70. Mm -hmm. So we're going to bring it back. I think we're going to do it probably um, twice throughout the year. But that's what I'm saying is the momentum now and the community engagement has changed tenfold. And I think that's